All right, I'm back with the next talk of who are the children of God and of Christ. <laughs> who is the seed of God and who is the seed of Christ? Okay, I believe I left off from the last time, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> kind of forgot where I left off at, but it's okay. I'm going to start at um, Isaiah 61 in verse 9. Isaiah 61. Verse 9. Let's head over there. Isaiah 61, verse 9. Okay. And the Lord said, <clears throat> The Lord said, And their seed shall be shall be known among the Gentiles. You see that? So the Lord said, and their seed shall be known among the Gentiles. All right? And their offspring among the people. All that see them shall acknowledge them that they are the seed which the Lord hath blessed. You see that? That's the seed. That's the elect seed. Now, Remember, as I explained before, in order to be the seed of Abraham, you have to belong to Christ. And if you belong to Christ, if you're given to Christ by the Father, you have God and Christ spirit in you. So if you belong to Christ, because as the Bible says, and ye are Christ and Christ is God's, right? So if you belong to Christ, then you're the seed of Abraham. You see what I'm saying? And if you belong to Christ, then you're a child of God now, which is the sons of God through Christ. Okay, so in order to be a child of God or the seed of Abraham, we have to be given to Jesus Christ by God, the Father Almighty himself. All right. So the Old Testament, the Lord is letting, you know, letting Israel know, you know, because there's going to be a seed which the Lord is going to bless in. That's his seed. That's his seed in, in, in you know, Christ, uh, his lamb. That's their, that's their seed. This is, the Lord was talking about this in the Old Testament. You see what I'm saying? Before Christ came in the flesh. That seed that the Lord is talking to here is the elect. That seed belongs to Christ. And God Almighty. Okay, see, because they're in the they're among the Gentiles right now. I'm gonna I'm come back. Let's go over to Micah real quick. Because there's only a remnant. Which is the Lord's seed is a remnant. Okay, that that promise seed. Micah chapter five, seven to eight. And the remnant of Jacob shall be in the midst of many people as a dew from the Lord, and as the showers upon the grass that tarrieth not for man, nor waiteth for the sons of men. And the remnant of Jacob shall be among the Gentiles. You see that? That's the remnant of Jacob. Is among who? The Gentiles. In the midst of many people as a lion among the beasts of the forest. As a young lion among the flocks of sheep. Who if he go through, both treadeth down and teareth in pieces and none can deliver. Okay. So the Lord's seed is in the midst of the Gentiles. And it's a remnant. That's why Paul said there's a remnant according to the election, to the election of grace at this present time. Because that's God's seed. That's the, the saints, the elect. Yep, that's the, the saints, the elect. All right, let's go back to Isaiah. Midst of the Gentiles. See, because the Lord said here, Isaiah 61 and 9, and their seed shall be known among the Gentiles. You see that? Their seed shall be known among the Gentiles. That's where that remnant is, is among the Gentiles. And their offspring among the people, all that see them shall acknowledge them, 
that they are the seed which the Lord have blessed. That's his grape. That's his elect. That's the working of his hands that he may be glorified. Right? See, because when you go over the Isaiah 44 verse 3 because this is what the Lord said you see that he's going to do so their seed shall be known among the Gentiles Isaiah 44 and verse 3 you can st we can start at verse 1 yet now hear O Jacob my servant and Israel whom I have I, whom I have chosen thus saith the Lord that made thee and formed thee from the womb, which will help thee. Fear not, O Jacob, my servant, and thou Jeshurun, whom I have chosen. So now we know in this verse, the Lord is talking to who? The Lord is talking to Israel. Let's read verse 3. For I will pour water upon him that is thirsty and floods upon the dry ground. I will pour my spirit upon thy seed. So who he's talking to? The Lord is talking to Israel. So he said he's going to pour his what? His spirit upon the seed of Israel. You see? And my blessing upon thine offspring. You see that? The Lord is talking to the seed of Israel only. You understand? So he's not talking to everybody. So he's talking to Israel directly. That's his seed. That's God in Christ's seed is, is Israel. The saints, the elect, though. So the Lord said, I will pour... I will pour my spirit upon thy seed and my blessing upon thine offspring. Right? Remember, he said, I will pour water upon him that is thirsty. That water, right? That water. Okay, call me to John chapter 7 and 37. Now, the Lord said he's going to pour water upon him that is thirsty. <laughs> now, what did Jesus say? John 7 and 37. In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. See, because he's the living um, he is the eternal life. You see, the fountain of living water. Christ, he's the God of Israel. He's the, um, yeah, the fountain of living waters. That's Christ. That's why the Lord said, thou hast forsaken the fountain of wisdom. That's God. The word of God most high is the fountain of wisdom. That's Christ. Christ is God. The word is God. You see, so that's what the Israelites did in the Old Testament. They forsook and forsaken the fountain of living waters, the most high. So what? that's why the Lord had to send his wisdom, his, his knowledge, his word and flesh. So that he can, you know, seek his lost sheep, which is the, the seed of the elect, the saints. Okay, whom God, whom he knew from the beginning. Before the foundation of the world, who the world he who he created the world for, for the righteous Israelites, not the wicked Israelites. So the Lord Himself, God Almighty, came in flesh to seek them, His sheep, whom He already knew before the foundation of the world, so that they could be made perfect in the last days through the gospel of Jesus Christ, the wisdom, the knowledge, the word, the word of life, the eternal life, Christ. Okay So God didn't come For everybody You see what I'm saying He didn't come for the whole entire world He didn't come for every Israelite He came He came for A remnant His lost sheep whom he knew before the foundation of the world He came for them 
that's he came for them that's in the world of Israel, but not the whole world of Israel. So that's why the Bible says, that's why Jesus said, you know, no man could come to me except the Father which sent me draw him. Because we have to be given to Christ by God. You see, so we have to be that seed that belongs to the Most High. The saints, the elect. We have to be that seed that he already knew from the beginning. You see? Like the Bible says, he was from the beginning, Christ, but was manifested in these last times for you. You see, so just like the Bible says, and if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And the Bible says the Lord knows those that are his. So and Christ said, you know, my sheep hear my voice because everyone that is of the truth is going to hear his voice. If we not of the truth, we're not going to hear his voice and listen. The words is spirit and life. So if the Bible says our spirit be a witness with his spirit that we are the sons of God, that's how it is because it's spiritual. <laughs> okay, that seed, uh, which like Isaac is, Isaac is the child of the promise of the spirit. That's So is the, the saints in the light. You see, because remember God said with Isaac, he told Abraham and Isaac shall thy seed be called. You see? So it's the seed. The seed is just just like Isaac, the children of the promise of the spirit. You see, going back and looking on the bloodlines and, and finding out who Israel is through that way, you can't do that because it's spiritual. It's all spiritual. Israel, the, the saints and the elect don't look like this flesh. They're just in this flesh for right now until the Lord come. You see, for, because he's the resurrection and the life. So they're just in this body. But the, the saints, the elect, are spiritual beings. They're spiritual beings waiting for the adoption of their body. Their true form of how they already look. You see what I'm saying? How they already look from the beginning. That's what the Lord said to, the, you know, to his disciples. In my father's house, there are many mansions. You see the tabernacles made without hands. Okay, so the sons of God are spiritual beings. They are the seed of Abraham. Okay. So yeah, so that's is is all spiritual. That's what we got to understand. And um yeah, they're waiting for the redemption of their body. They're in this flesh. Um, but they're spiritual beings waiting for the adoption of their body, of their true body. Remember, the Lord said he already knew them from the beginning. He knew them before the foundation of the world. Okay, so he's going to give them the true, their true body, the true tabernacles made with our hands. You know, when he returned, that's the resurrection of the Lord. And, um, yeah. All right. So let's keep going. So the Lord, remember the Lord said he declared the end from the beginning. You see what I'm saying? He declared it from the beginning. All right. Let's head over to Isaiah 65, verse 8 to 9 and 21 to 24. 8 to 9 and 21 to 24, 65. The Lord said, thus saith the Lord, as the new wine is found in the cluster, and one saith, destroy it. Not for a blessing is in it, so will I do for my servants' sakes. Who is God's servants? This the, the Israelites. The Lord said it throughout the, throughout, throughout the Old Testament. But that's why when you go to Galatians chapter 5 and verse 7, you, the Bible says what? Thou art no more a servant but a son. You see, because now they're the sons of God through Christ. That's the adoption. 
servant sakes sakes that i may not destroy them all see because the lord has a remnant <laughs> israel was as the sand of the sea and as the stars big in number the lord said that would happen and that happened but that's not the lord has a remnant out of the nation of israel a small remnant which is the 144,000. there's a small remnant that's the the seed of the lord okay um, let me see. Verse nine, and I will bring forth a seed out of Jacob. See that? And I will bring forth a seed. You see, that's why the Bible says in Galatians three and sixteen, He saith not unto seeds as of many, but as a, as unto one, and to thy seed which is Christ. And I will bring forth a seed out of Jacob. And out of Judah, an inheritor of my mountains, and mine elect shall inherit it. So who's going to inherit that? The mountain of the Lord. The elect. And mine elect shall inherit it, and my servants shall dwell there. You see that? And I will bring forth a seed out of Jacob and out of Judah, an inheritor. You see that? Of my mountains. And mine elect shall inherit it. That's why the Lord, Shalah, he comes out of Judah. Jesus Christ come out of the tribe of Judah, right? He's the seed of David, according to the flesh. And he's the salvation of the Jews. But he's also the salvation of all the 12 tribes of Israel because as I said before through the rejection of some of the Jews salvation came on to the Gentiles who are Jews and the 10 tribes the northern kingdom all right that was the point Shalah and unto him shall the gathering of the people be because even though God's church his saints his elect is scattered all over the world Shalah would gather them that's why Jesus explained I believe it is in Matthew 24 when he said, um, immediately after the tribulation of those days, uh, shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give a light. Let me make sure. Let's go over there real quick. Matthew 24 and 29. Jesus said, immediately after the tribulation of those days, shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light. And the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. See that? And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. Right? And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great with power and great glory. And what he's gonna do? And he shall send <laughs> Because remember the Lord Jesus Christ is he said what? When the Son of Man come in his father's glory with all his holy angels and he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet and they shall gather together his elect remember the lord just said in isaiah 65 and 9 and i will bring forth a seed out of jacob and out of judah and inherit of my mountains and mine elect and mine elect shall inherit it see that that's god's great the ones he's working on they're being washed they're being cleansed by the gospel of Jesus Christ, the word. They're being renewed in the spirit of their, their mind. They're putting on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Right? The gospel, the knowledge, Christ, Jesus Christ. So the Lord said, and he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet and they shall gather together his elect. Where they at? From the four winds. That's all the nations. From one end of heaven to the other. That's why when you read Revelation chapter 5. And I think it's verse 8 or 9. They said, Thou hast redeemed us out of all kindreds and nations by thy blood. That's the elect. That's the saints. And what, what did the Lord do? Made them to be kings and priests. And what they're going to do? Reign on the earth with the Lord for a thousand years. That's that. That's the seed. That's the elect. <coughs> okay, so let's read verse nine again. The Lord said, "Oh, then let's head over to Second Thessalonians because Paul, remember, because Jacob before he died said, um, the power shall not depart from Judah, nor lawgiver from between his feet, 
until Shalom come. That's the Christ. And unto him, Jesus Christ, shall the gathering of the people be. Christ just said he's going to send his angels to gather his elect from the, four, from, from the four winds. That's when he returned. But let's hear what Paul said. Let's, see, let's hear what Paul says here. Um, Second Thessalonians. Second Thessalonians 2 and 1. What did Paul say? Because the point was for Christ to gather all things. It was for him to gather the 12 tribes of Israel through his body. Okay, gather to together things in one through his body. Second Thessalonians two and one. Paul said, "Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our and by our gathering together unto Him." Paul understood about Shalom coming to gather the people. When you go to John eleven, that's what Cephas was explaining to the Jews. He said, "You, you know that that is not as." He said, "Uh." Nor that it is expedient that one man should die for the people and not for that nation only, but he shall what? Gather together the children of God that were scattered abroad. You see that? So Paul understood. See, when you go to John 11, 48 to 52, if we let him thus alone, all men will believe on him. They talking about Christ and the Romans shall come and take away both our place and nation. And one of them named Cephas, being the high priest that same year said unto them, ye know nothing at all, nor consider that it is expedient for us that one man should die for the people and that the whole nation perish not. And this spake he not of himself, but being high priest that year, he prophesied, see that he prophesied that Jesus should die for that nation. That's the Jews. You see what I'm saying? That's why Christ explained to the, the woman of Samaria. He told her for salvation is of the Jews because Shiloh is the salvation of Judah. You see what I'm saying? But he's the salvation of the whole 12 tribes of Israel because some of the rejection of Judah, the Jews from the that was born in the land, salvation came onto the Gentiles. You see what I'm saying? Who are Jews born from different nations and to the northern kingdom. That was the point that God concluded them both in unbelief so that he might have mercy upon them both and save them both. Because God said, Israel, in Isaiah 45 and 17, Israel shall be saved in the Lord and the Lord with an everlasting salvation. Ye shall not be ashamed nor confound the world without end. The salvation is Christ. That's why the Bible says there's, not, there's no other name given un, under heaven. Um, there's, not, there's no other name So I believe it's Acts chapter four and twelve. The Bible says, "Neither is there any, neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved." You see that? Because the only, the elect is saved, the seed of Christ and God. The elect is saved by the name of Jesus Christ, because Jesus is the Father's name. That's why. That's why Jesus Christ said. This is why when Jesus died, it says in Philippians, I think it's Philippians 2 or Colossians. But this is why when Jesus died, God gave him glory. You see, and the name better than all names. And this is why, because at the, every, at the name of Jesus Christ, every knee is going to bow and confess that Jesus is Lord. Now, Jesus said himself, he said, I come in my father's name. This is why the saints and the elect, when you go to Revelation chapter 14, I believe it's verse 1, the Lamb standing on Mount Zion with 144,000 having his Father's name written in their foreheads. You see what I'm saying? And that's why you go to Revelation 22, and they shall see his face. Who? God Almighty in the end. Because they're going to be in the kingdom with him, so they're going to see his face. <clears throat> By that time, they put off the flesh, and they put on the the immortal, um, the immortal, the eternal life, the glorified bodies, because God is a spirit. The only way you can see God, you have to have a spiritual body. Okay, so now, that's why I said they shall see his face. Why? Because his name is in their foreheads. You see what I'm saying? So the elect, the, the saints, 
there is no other name under heaven given among men. Other names are, are false names that's given among men. Those are names of men. But the true name of, of God Almighty is Jesus Christ. His name is Jesus. This is why when you go to the Old Testament, the Lord always told Israel that they profaned his name among the heathen. And that's why he said, I do this not for your sakes, but for his what? His name, his holy name. Because the name Jesus is holy. Now, a lot of the people don't understand this because they think that Jesus' name is of this and of that and low. But this is what, what you got to understand. This is why God don't choose the mighty. You see what I'm saying? He choose the lowly. And people think that that name, that name is Jesus is low, but the name Jesus is very powerful. All they did was just change the image of God's son. They never changed his name. This is what the world don't understand, but that's why when you go to second Ezra <clears throat> chapter two, when Ezra was, um, he seen them standing on the Mount. They was on Mount Zion with Christ and Christ um, crowning them. That's why he said he commended them that stood so stiffly for the name of the Lord. You see what I'm saying? Um, because they stood stiffly for the name of Jesus. You see what I'm saying? Because it, it, it's deep, but that could be for another talk. But I just wanted to, to explain that, that, that the name Jesus is very powerful. And that's it. That's the father's true name, which the Israelites in the Old Testament were profane, profaning. So that's the reason why when you read the New Testament, when Jesus said, Father, glorify me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. The Lord will speak about, Christ will speak about glorifying, being glorified with God. See, because that goes into them being one. But um, I, if I'm not mistaken, there's a verse when he said, um, let me let me read for Acts, finish reading Acts 4 and 12. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Right? Because at the name of Jesus Christ, that's the only name the elect and the saints are going to be saved. The elect and the saints, they have the name of Christ. That's why they're going to have the name. They have his name written in their foreheads. After you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and after you believe you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. I believe there's a, now remember Jesus said himself, he said, I come in my father's name. When you go over here, John chapter 12, 27 to 28, what did Jesus say? Now is my soul troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour, but for this cause came I unto this hour. Father, glorify thy name. You see that? Because this is what Jesus is speaking to the Father. Christ said, I come in my Father's name. Father, glorify thy name. Then came there a voice from heaven saying, I have both glorified it and will glorify it again. You see, this is why Christ is given that name, you see, because there's a scripture where the Bible says um, that the whole family in heaven is named. You see what I'm saying? Because the name Jesus Christ is very, very powerful. But, they, but just as the Bible says, Satan deceived the whole world. Because like, as I, as I explained, the Bible is speaking directly to God's saints, his elect, the scriptures, the gospel is speaking directly to them. You see what I'm saying? The saints and the elect knows the father's name. You see what I'm saying? But this is why when you go to the Bible and Revelation, 
when you go to the book of Revelations chapter, I believe it's 13. See, because the saints and the elect can't be deceived. They won't, they won't be able to be deceived because you guys, there's going to be false prophets. There's false prophets, false teachers, just as the Bible says will be in the last days. And what you got to understand is that they have the spirit of error in them, the spirit of the antichrist. Just as the Bible says, if you deny that Jesus Christ came in the flesh, that's antichrist. You antichrist. You see what I'm saying? Because according to the Bible, Jesus did come in the flesh. You see, if any man can't say that, they they not of God. You see what I'm saying? Because you got to say it's all spiritual. This is why the Bible says, um, no man by the spirit of the Lord can call Jesus accursed. You can't. See, because you have God's spirit in you. If you have God's spirit in you, because you got the spirit of error and you got the spirit of truth. It's, it's one or the other. It's either you belong to God or you belong to the devil. You can't belong. It's no. You can't go into the middle. That's why the Lord said you can't be lukewarm. You see what I'm saying? You got to choose one or the other. You can't serve two masters. So it's either the or. There's, a, there's two seeds, the seed of the devil and there's the seed of God. So if you have the spirit of Christ and God in you, you belong to God. Remember what Jesus said, everyone that is of the truth hears my voice. The words are speaking to you. They are spirit and they are life, right? The Father, um, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost is one. Now, you have the spirit of truth and you have the spirit of error. That's why the Bible says, try to uh, test the spirits whether they are of God. Because we all going off looking at the flesh and saying, oh, that person is an Israelite because they're so-called black. And it's so-called a Negro. That's not how, see, that's not how it works. It's spiritual. As the scriptures say, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. You see what I'm saying? So Satan has his people out here too. And they're going to come looking like different nations of people, even so-called Negroes. So you can't say every person that's a Negro is an Israelite. The Bible says our spirit bear witness with his spirit that we are the sons of God. You see what I'm saying? Because in the Old Testament, Ezekiel 37 and 14 and other scriptures, the Lord said he's going to put his spirit inside of Israel, which is going to be that seed of the elect. So that's why we go to Ephesians 1, 12 to 14. After you first trusted in Christ, after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and after you believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise because he promised from the Old Testament he will put his spirit within Israel. So now after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, after you believe you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise until the day of redemption. You see, because the Lord purchased his saints and his elect. You see what I'm saying? That's why their body is the temple of God, where, where God and the Holy Ghost dwell. They were brought with the blood of the lamb, the blood of Christ, the blood of God. So they belong to the Lord and they're going to have the Lord's spirit in them. You see what I'm saying? Because it's not what goes in your mouth that the in, in that go that defiles is what comes out your mouth that defiles the temple of God. That's why the Bible speaks, the gospel speaks about, you know, um, filthy communication. Let none of that come out of your mouth and guile and deceit, because that's not of God. That's how you defile the temple of God is what comes out your mouth. So evil communication and cursing and and evil things and speaking. Things, wicked things coming out your mouth. You cannot let that come out of your mouth. And that's what the saints and the elect is going to, they're not going to allow that to happen because why? They're born again. They're washed. So the filthy communication and all the wickedness, is that stuff, that's the old man. They put that stuff off and they put on the knowledge. They put on God now. They put on Jesus Christ, right? Till Christ be formed in you, the Bible says. He hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear son because Christ is the image of the invisible God. Jesus said, God is the spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. We are the circumcision which, which worship God in the spirit and have no confidence in the flesh. They that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust. You see what I'm saying? So those that belong to Christ have Christ and God's spirit in them. You see what I'm saying? God said in the Old Testament, I will put my laws in there and what parts? How? Through Christ. 
for what the Lord could not do and that it was weak through the flesh because it's weak through this flesh. So God set forth his son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. He hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. This is why the word was made flesh. The, the word came into this body. You see what I'm saying? That's what Paul said. Who shall deliver me from the body of this death? I delight in the law of God after the inward man, because that's what it's about. So then with the mind, I my soul serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. So the seed, the elect, the saints, the, the elect, the saints, they, they put off their old man and put on the new man. Okay. Which is this, which is the knowledge, the gospel of Jesus Christ, the wisdom, the word, the word of life, the eternal life. All right, so now the name, the saints, the elect, they have God's name written in their forehead. Now, when you go to Revelations chapter 12 and 17, what did the Bible say? And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed. You see that? This is the seed of God and of Christ. That's the elect. Which what? What do they do? Which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ because they have the witness in themselves and they keep the commandments of God. See, because they're delighting in the law of God after the inward man, like Paul said, he because in this body of death, when you go to Romans six and six, it says, um, when you go to this is why Paul was explaining the things that I would do. I don't and the things that I don't do he do because it's no more him that do it it's the sin that's in this body this body has to be destroyed that's what it's about it's about the destruction of the flesh that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus the day at the resurrection that's why they're going to be changed in the moment of the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet they're going to be what changed into the sons of God they're going to have their true bodies Romans 6 and 6, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him. That's the point. They that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust. That the body of sin. What is this body? It's the body of sin. That's what Paul said. It is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me is because of this body. So that's why the reason why he said, I delight in the law of God after the inward man. So with the mind, he's serving the law of God. Be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Be not conformed to this world, but the by the transforming of the renewing of your mind. Though the outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day because it's about here. What did Christ tell Nicodemus? Except the man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Except the man be born again of the spirit and water, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, not of this flesh, but of incorruptible. What's that? By the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. The gospel, the word, the wisdom. It's this body because Satan operates through this body. This body that, that, that the body of sin might be destroyed. You can't keep the law of God with a carnal mind. It's about your conscience. That's what it's about. And that's why the saints and the elect going to fulfill the law of the Lord. And that's why they stood on the Mount Zion with the Lamb. Because they fulfilled the law of the Lord. You can't keep the, the law of God with a carnal mind. So how much shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? Because the blood of bulls and goats can never take away sins. Because it could not purge the conscience. That's why every year the Israelites would, every year coming with blood and um, had to come with the blood of the animals because the blood of bulls and goats of animals can never take away sins because it can't purge the conscience. But how much shall the blood of Christ, who do the eternal spirit offer himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? See that he had washed the uh, um, he had washed our sins in his own blood. He had redeemed us out of all kindred nations and tongues by thy blood. It's the faith in his blood, as Romans 
3, 22 to 26 says. All right. So that was the perfect atonement that the saints and the elect received. The blood of the lamb. John said, behold, the lamb of God was taken away the sin of the world. Because God told the Israelites in the Old Testament, he, they were not, they, they're going to be redeemed. How? See, they're not going to be redeemed with money. But with the blood of the lamb, the blood of God. So he purchased them. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed. See that? That henceforth we should not serve sin. You got to understand what, what the sin is. You see what I'm saying? Sin is the transgression of the law. Yes, because why? With the carnal mind, you can't keep the law of God because you're going to transgress the law. But your conscience... The conscience has to be, you have to wash. You see what I'm saying? Like the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 22. Let us draw near with the true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. You see that? Be renewed in the spirit of your mind. It's this body that the saints and the elect have to be delivered from. Delivered from. All right. Now, Revelation 12 and 17, that's the, the saints and the elect which keep which keep the commandments of God, because as Brother Paul, Paul says here in First Corinthians 7 and 19, because that's what it's about. See, because circumcision and, circ and uncircumcision avail of nothing. You see what I'm saying? The circumcision of Christ is putting off the body of the sins of the flesh. That's the circumcision of Christ. 1 Corinthians 7 and 19. Circumcision, and nothing, and circumcision is nothing and uncircumcision is nothing. But the keeping of the commandments of God. You see that? That's why Paul said, do we then make void the law through faith? God forbid we establish the law. Christ said, I didn't come to destroy the law of the prophets, but to fulfill he came to fulfill all written about him in the Psalms and the prophets, Christ. He come in the volume of the book to do the will of the Lord. It's all written of Christ. He's the word of God. You see what I'm saying? So the law is not done away with. It's just the law in the inward man because God said in Jeremiah 31, verse 31 to 34, he will put his law in the inward parts. That's why Christ is the new covenant. He's the new testament. He's the mediator of the new testament. Okay. That's how you do it. The, the, the law of God and the inward man Staying away from the flesh and walking and living in the spirit But the only way you can do that Is we have to have the spirit of God and Christ in us So we have to be given to the Lord uh, We have to be given to Christ by God Alright, so now I want to jump down to um, Because what I was talking about before Talking about the name, right? Because that, like I said, the saints, the elect, they're going to have, they know the Lord's name. They're going to have the Lord's name in their foreheads. Um, Like I said, the name Jesus Christ is very powerful. All they did was change the image. That's all they did was turn the image, you know, into like a white person. That's all they did. But the name, they haven't changed the name. That's the, the name Jesus is how the, the saints and the elect are saved. You know. But like I said, the, the elect, they're going to understand. Because like I said, this, the, the scriptures are speaking directly to the saints and the elect. Um, that's why when you go to the scriptures, to Colossians, about the, see, the mystery. Because this mystery, as the scripture says, has been hidden from ages but the Lord revealed it to his saints. He's revealing it to his saints because they're going to know the truth, the mystery of the Gentiles. And, and you know, they're going to understand it. Galatians chapter 1 and verse 26. Even the mystery which have been hid from ages and from generations, but is now made manifest to his saints. To whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Remember I read before in Isaiah 61 and 9, God said, 
they are the seed which the Lord hath blessed, right? Remember, you go to Isaiah, let's go back to Isaiah 61. Remember what the Lord said. See, because remember, God's seed is among the Gentiles. And their seed shall be known among the Gentiles, and their offspring among the people. All that see them shall acknowledge them, that they are the seed which the Lord hath blessed. And I read in, uh, I believe it was Micah 5 and 7 and 8, if I'm not mistaken. That's where the saints, the elect, are among the Gentiles. <clears throat> Micah 5 and 8, and the remnant of Jacob shall be among the Gentiles in the midst of many people. You see that? As a lion among the beasts of the forest, as a young lion among the flocks of sheep, who, if he go through, both treadeth down and teareth in pieces and none can deliver. Because in the end, let's go to Isaiah chapter 60 and 21. You got to understand that there's still prophecy that has to be fulfilled from the Old Testament. So the, you can't just say the Old Testament is done away with. That's not true. Isaiah 60 verse 21. Thy people also shall be all what? Righteous. How? Through Christ. Because the Lord was explaining to the Israelites about this. Because the Lord is the one. He's, he's the husbandman. Right. And he's waiting for his precious fruit and you have long patience for it because they're being he's he's the Lord is cleansing them and washing them through the word, the gospel of Jesus Christ. So the Lord knows when they're ready. And. um, Number it says that people also shall shall be all righteous. That's the elect, the saints, that's that the elect seed. We through the spirit, not the flesh. We through the spirit wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. You see what I'm saying? Though they have not seen me with bodily eyes, yet in spirit they believe the things I say. Who is the righteousness? Christ. Because now the Bible says in Romans 3, 22 to 26, they both fell short of the glory of God. That was the southern kingdom and the northern kingdom. Because God concluded them both un unbelief that he may save them. That's why they are saved through the body of Jesus Christ. They are no longer twain, but one. That's the point of putting on the new man. They're putting on the new man. They're the body of Christ. They're the church of Christ and God. So they're being renewed here. They're being cleansed. Right? Christ is that righteousness. He is the righteousness. That's why the Bible says Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to them that believe. You see what I'm saying? Why? Because for what the Lord could not do and that it was weak through the flesh, God sent forth his son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. That um, Condemned sin in the flesh that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. Right? He put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. They're sanctified by the body of Christ. The saints that in the elect. And if the saints and elect are sanctified by the body of Christ, they are one with Christ. You see what I'm saying? And they are one with God. Thy people also shall be all righteous. They shall inherit the land forever. See that? The branch of my planting, the work of my hands, that I may be glorified. When you read uh, 2 Edges 9 and 22, the Lord said, Let the multitude of them perish that was born in vain. Let my great be kept. You see, because the Lord is working on them. Let's jump over to Isaiah 61 and 3. What's, what's going to happen in the end? Now, when they're washed and cleansed, they're going to be all righteous. How? Through the gospel. And therefore, he's going to put, he's going to plant his elect, as he said in Isaiah 65. And uh, 9, and I will bring forth a seed out of Jacob. And out of Judah, an inheritor of my mountains, and mine elect shall inherit it, and my servant shall dwell there. His elect going to be all righteous. They're going to be washed and cleansed, born again. So they're going to be able to inherit his mountain. You see what I'm saying? And he's going to give them the land as he promised Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So, But the, the Israelites in the Old Testament who was doing the works of the flesh and evil and wickedness, that's why he plucked them up and, and threw them out of the land. Which he's going to put his righteous plant back in there, the elect, the, the elect seed in the end times. He's going to put them back in his vineyard. You see that? That was the point. The Lord scattered them among the heathen to consume the filthiness out of them by the gospel of Jesus Christ. Let's go to uh, Isaiah 61 and verse 3. To appoint unto them that mourn 
in Zion, because the Lord here, he's the one that's going to bring the good tidings. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. Isaiah 61 and 1, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord have anointed me to preach good tidings. That's how they're going to be all righteous. When he said in Isaiah 60 and 21, they're going to be washed and cleansed by the gospel of Jesus Christ. So the Lord said, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me. All of this is talking about Christ right here. It's, the, it's about his coming and him coming to preach the gospel and the good tidings. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord have anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He have sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and in the opening of the prison to them that are bound. You see that? To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all that mourn. So that's why when you go to the book of Luke, Christ fulfilled this. The Old and the New Testament as I always say, it's speaking to the Israelites. Speaking to them, it's not speaking to anyone else but the Israelites. Luke chapter 4 and 14. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee. And there went out a fame of him throughout through all the region round about. And he taught in their synagogues. He's speaking to all Jews. Galilee is where Jews is at, where Israelites are. And he taught in their synagogues, being glorified of all. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. They're still Jews. And as his customs was, he went into the synagogue. That's why Christ said, I spake openly to the world. And in the temple um, where the Jews always resort. And in secret have I said nothing. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. What is he going to read? Isaiah 61, verse 1 to 2. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. See that? And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it is written. That's Isaiah 61, verse 1 to 2. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he have anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He have sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book and he gave it again to the minister and sat down in the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him because it was it was written about him. That's what is written about Christ. That's why he said, I came to fulfill all written about me in the Psalms and the prophets. But like, I, like the scripture said, blindness is part is happening in Israel because it wasn't meant for every Israelite to understand the truth. It was for the, the elect, the remnant, the promised seed. And he um, and were fasting on him and he began to say unto them, this day is the scripture fulfilled in your ears. You see that? But many of, 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 of Christ's um, house, his people got offended in him. You see, that's why he said a prophet is not without honor except in his own country. You see, and he also is the prophet that was raised up from the midst of the brethren like unto Moses in, in Deuteronomy 18. He is that prophet. So he told him, he said, he began to say unto them, this, this day is the scripture fulfilled in your ears. He's the word of God. I come in the volume to do, the, do thy will. You see, because it's written about him. I come in the volume of the book. Now, let's go back to Isaiah 61 and let's jump down to verse 3. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. See that? So he's coming to preach good tidings to Zion. Zion, Zion is Judah, Jerusalem. That's where Judah is. Zion, Judah, Jerusalem. Because that's where God's rest is, is in Zion. That's his rest forever in Judah, Jerusalem. To give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, and the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called what? Trees of righteousness. You see that? The planting of the Lord, that he may, that he might be glorified. Remember he said that in Isaiah 60 and 21. Thy people also shall be all righteous. They shall inherit the land forever. The branch of my plant and the work of my hands, that I may be glorified. Okay, so that's the remnant, the elect. That's going to be called trees of righteousness and they're going to be all righteous because in the end, he's going to put them back in the land because they're born again. 
and he's never gonna pluck them up ever again because they're not going they don't they're not gonna be able to sin no more because they've been washed they've been born again by they've been born again by the word of God so the filthiness is out of them so he's gonna plant them in his land and never pluck them up again all right so Christ said he come in his father's name the saints still elect they're gonna have the father's name written in their foreheads. Now, let's go to Revelation 14 and verse one. And I looked and lo, a lamb stood on the Mount Zion and with him in hundred forty and four thousand, having his father's name written in their foreheads. Christ said, I come in my father's name. Let's go to Revelation chapter 22. And verse four. And they shall see his face and his name shall be in their foreheads. You see that? And they shall see his face. And his name shall be in their foreheads. And his name shall be in their foreheads. Okay. So the saints and the elect, they're going to have the father's name written in, in, in their foreheads. All right, and the, and the name of Jesus Christ is that name. That's the Father's name. That's the name Christ came in. The Christ, the Lamb, right? Because God made him both Lord and Christ. So that's the name that they're saved by. That's how they were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise because after they heard the gospel and after they believed, they were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise the gospel of who? Jesus Christ. That's the gospel. The gospel is Jesus Christ. All right. Now, that's very important because, like I said, that's the seed. The saints and the elect are the seed of God in Christ. And they all they're gonna have they gonna have the, the father's name written in their forehead because they're the body of Christ and the church of Christ. And in the body in the church of Christ, there is no division. That was the point, is why the gospel is preached to the saints and the elect. The church, so that they won't because in the church, in, 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 in the church and the body of Christ, there should be no divisions in there because they all should have the same mind. And that mind is the mind of Christ. Who have known the mind of the Lord that they may instruct him, but we have the mind of Christ. So if they're all on one accord with the same mind, um, the saints and the elect are the church, and they all have the Father's name written in their foreheads. So they all on one accord with the same mind. After they heard the word of truth, the gospel of their salvation, and after they believed, they were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. So they're all going to have the same mind. There ain't going to be no division in the church of God or the body of Christ with all these other different names, which is given among men. But the true name of the Most High, God Almighty, the God of Israel, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob is Jesus Christ. That's his name, Jesus. And when the Lord returns, <laughs> everyone is going to bow and confess that Jesus is Lord, not any other names. It's going to be Jesus is Lord. That's going to be, that's what everybody's going to bow to, the name of Jesus Christ. That name Jesus is very powerful. Very, very, very powerful. But they want people to think is not but that's why the bible says satan deceived the whole world you see what i'm saying 
That's what Paul was explaining. If our gospel is hid, it is hid to them that are lost. Whom the God of this world have blind the minds of them that believe not. Lest the light, light is God, Christ. Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ should shine unto them. But as I said, the Lord only came to, to wake up his saints, his elect, so that they can see in this dark, in this very evil, in this very wicked world that we that we that we live in. So the saints, the elect, like I said, they're gonna they're gonna know the Lord's name. They got his name written in their foreheads. The Most High is not the author of confusion. They all have one mind. They all on one accord, the saints and the elect, and they have the mind of Christ. So they won't be able to be deceived. Okay. All right, let's keep going. Let's go back to Isaiah 65. We left off at Isaiah 65. And let's read verse... Let's read verse 9. And I will bring forth a seed out of Jacob and out of Judah, an inheritor of my mountains, and mine elect shall inherit it, and my servants shall dwell there. Let's jump over to 21 to 24. And they shall build houses and inhabit them, and they shall plant vineyards and eat the fruit of them. They shall not build and another inhabit. See, because when when the Israelites was under the curses, you see what I'm saying? These are the things that was going on. You see? But his God's elect is not going to build this time and another inhabit. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For as the days of a tree are the days of my people, and mine elect shall long enjoy the works of their hands. They shall not labor in vain, nor bring forth for trouble. For they are the seed of the, of the blessed of the Lord, and their offspring with them. And it shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. You see that? Because then... The saints, the elect, they're going to be washed. They're going to be born again and cleansed. So the Lord is going to hear them. So the Lord said before they call, he's going to answer. See, because the Most High, he hid his face from the Israelites due to the wickedness that they were doing in the land. You see what I'm saying? He told Moses, Moses is going to sleep with his fathers, go sleep with his fathers. And they're going to rise up. And going after gods once they get to the land. And the Lord said he's going to hide his face from them. And that's what the Lord did. Okay. So the Lord said, and it shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. And while they they are yet speaking, I will hear. You see what I'm saying? Because that's the seed of the Lord. That's his people. That's God's people. Those that did the will of the Lord. That's his seed. That's his children. That's his people. That's the nation of Israel. They have done the will of the Lord. They've they done what the Lord asked them to do. Not just being an Israelite on the outside appearance. And we think that's a child of God. It's about them being doing the works. Being, being an Israelite, a Jew, inward. Because that's what the Lord wanted was for Israel to listen to his word. Ever since he brought them out of Egypt with Moses, Aaron, and Miriam. But it wasn't to those seeds. It was a promised seed because the Lord said, For I knew they would not hear me, for it is a stiff-necked people. But in the land of their captivities, they shall remember themselves. That's the seed of the Lord. The elect, they're going to remember themselves. In the land of their captivities among the Gentiles. And um, they're going to do the will of the Lord. This is the reason why Christ explained when, when they said, um, you know, they told Christ his mother, his brother and sister was, was calling him. 
And Christ had to explain to them, who is my mother, my brother, and my sister? Those that do the will of the Lord is my mother, brother, and sister. Because that's how deep it is. <clears throat> that's how deep it is. And um, as I always said before, as I said before, the Lord's seed, his saints, and his elect, um, they grow up in regular families. They grow up in regular households. And they don't know the truth yet until the light shines unto them, until the gospel. And they may grow up, you know, in regular households and families. But the Lord may only call them. You see, it might not call the rest in that family. This is how deep the truth really is. Christ said, blesses he that is not offended in me. Because the saints and the elect are not going to love their father, mother, wife, kids, brother, sister more than God. That's why the Bible said they followed the lamb whithersoever he go. Because they already belong to the Lord from the beginning. This is why Jesus said, I came not to bring peace upon earth, but a sword, division. He came to set a man at variance, son against uh, father, mother-in-law uh, mother against daughter-in-law. Because the Lord ain't calling everybody in the household. His seed is among the Gentiles and they're going to grow up in regular households. But they belonged to the Lord from the beginning. When you, you have to understand, when you grow up with people, you become attached to them. You know, you grow to love them and, you know, you that's your family. But the saints and elect, when they wake up, when the Lord wakes them up, they're going to realize and understand the truth. That's why the Bible says, he that increaseth in knowledge, increaseth in sorrow. This is how deep the truth really is. Yep. But the saints elect, they wake up through the gospel of Jesus Christ. And their true family is in heaven, not on earth, not in, in, their, in the households that they grew up in. Now, their family is, you know, all around the world because the same is with them. You know? So, yeah, it's very deep, you know? But, um... The seed of the Lord, as I was saying, the seed of the Lord, they were they were chosen from the beginning. And um, the gospel is going to wake them up to who they truly are. They're, they're spiritual beings in this flesh. Yep. They're spiritual beings in this flesh. Okay, now let's go over to Let's go over to Philippians chapter 2 verse 5 to 16, I believe it is. Yeah. So the seed of the Lord is going to love God Almighty more than anybody. They're not going to give up. They're not going to stop. They're going to endure to the end. And they won't let family members or any one of that stop them. Because they love the Lord. They love him above all. They're faithful to, all, to God Almighty. Because the Lord is the one that created them. He's the one that knew them from the beginning. 
They already belonged to him. He just came in the last days to get them. Okay. Philippians 2. Oh, Philippians 2, 15 to 16. That ye may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God, without rebuke, in the midst of a crook and perverse nation, among whom ye shine as lights in the world, holding forth the word of life, that I may rejoice in the day of Christ. That I have not late, that I have not run in vain, neither labored in vain. So, so the seed, the elect, the sons of God. That's the point of them putting on the knowledge, because, like I said, they're in the midst of the Gentiles, as I read to you, in the scriptures. That's why the gospel have to be preached into all nations, the Bible says, and then the end comes. That's why Christ told the disciples, go out and preach the, the word to every creature. You see what I'm saying? But the Lord is speaking to his elect. It has to be preached to the, the church of God, the, the, the saints, the elect. That's what Peter and them and the, the disciples, they, approached, they, they preached the word to, to Israelites. And that's why, because the Lord Jesus used Paul to go to the circumcision and uh, he used Peter to go to the circumcision and Paul to go to the uncircumcision. You see what I'm saying? Which are the Gentiles born in other nations, which are Jews, Jews born in other nations, the Gentile nations, because God's saints, his elect are scattered everywhere to all nations. They are the body, the church of Christ. You see what I'm saying? They're, in, they're born in different countries and nations and they're his body and his church. You see, that's why when he comes, he's going to gather his body and his church to him, his bride, when he comes. But they're all over. Okay? They they are the church. They are the body. Not a building made with man hands. They are the body. They are the church themselves. You see what I'm saying? Not a building that you see on every corner. God don't dwell in those buildings made by man's hands. Because their body, as it says in 1 Corinthians 3 and uh, I believe 16 to 17 and, and 1 Corinthians 6, uh, 19, I believe it is, to 20. That, um, that their body is the temple of God. Yeah, 19 to 20. What know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which is in you? After you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and after you believe, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, which ye have of God, and you are not your own, because they were they've been brought with the blood of the Lamb, the blood of God, for you are brought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in and in your spirit, which are who, which are God's. So, there. At the day of redemption, the Lord is going to gather his purchased possession, which is them. Okay, his church, his saints, his elect, the body of Christ. All right. Um, so they are the temple, not, not a building. They are the building of God. Saints and the elect is... The, they are the church. They are the body of Christ, and they are the they are God's building. First Corinthians chapter three verse nine. For we are laborers together with God. Ye are God's husbandry. Ye are God's building. You see that? Not the buildings made by man's hands. He don't dwell in those. That's that's on every corner. God, they are God's building. The saints and the elect. They are the church. They are the body of Christ.
Um, so among these nations, this is why when you look at all Paul epistles, it's speaking to like Philippians and Corinthians and Romans, you know, and, and, and these different letters are sent to these different places because these are where Jews are born at. And he's speaking to his brethren in these places about how they ought to walk in the body of Christ and how they ought to be. It's not speaking to, to the regular Gentiles that are there. The epistles of Paul are speaking to his brethren that are born in those places. You know, it's the truth, you know, but like the scriptures say here, you know, in, in 1 Corinthians chapter um, 1 and 26, even the mystery, see, because that's the mystery which has been hid, which have been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints, to whom God would make known what is the riches of what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles? Because everybody is wondering, what is this mystery among the Gentiles? You know, they think in the scriptures is speaking to regular Gentiles, regular people, the heathen. But it's not. It's speaking to God's people who are called Gentiles. You see what I'm saying? That's why when you go to um, John chapter 7, when he was explaining to Christ, I'm not going to get much into this because I, I did a lesson about it, but... When you go to when you go here to John seven and thirty five, the Jews was wondering where Christ was going to go, because they didn't understand Christ was talking about he's going back to where he came from, heaven, from the Father. So they said, then said the Jews among themselves, these were the Jews that were born in the land. You see what I'm saying? The Jews that were born in the land called gentiles who are jews born in other nations they called them unclean they didn't accept them because they were born from another nation you see the same with cornelius cornelius was a jew born from another nation then said the jews among themselves whither will he go that we shall not find him will he go unto the dispersed that scattered the dispersed among the Gentiles and teach the Gentiles. You see that? So they was wondering, will Christ go to the scattered among the Gentiles and teach the Gentiles? Who's that? James 1 and 1, to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad. Greetings. They were called Gentiles. These uh, different uh, Jews that were born from um, different nations, they were called Gentiles. Because they wasn't born in their homeland, which is Jerusalem, so they were called unclean in the eyes of Jews and the Pharisees. They wasn't accepted. But in the eyes of God, they are accepted because they're washed and cleansed through the gospel. They're washed from the idols that they worshiped when they were born in different nations. They're washed from the filthiness of how they used to walk being born in these nations. So that's why when you go to, when you read Philippians 2, we read Philippians 2 and 15 to 16, the gospel was telling them, you know, shine, they shine as lights in the world because they are not to walk the same as the regular Gentiles walk. You see what I'm saying? Because when you go to um, Ephesians chapter 4, it's about them, the Gentiles born in other nations, putting off the old man and the new man, putting on the new man, the knowledge. Ephesians 4 and 17, this I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind, having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance. See that through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness, blindness of their heart, who being past filling have given themselves over unto lasciviousness to work all uncleanness with greediness. But ye have not so learned Christ. If we have been taught by Christ. The Gentiles don't know the creator. The regular heathen don't know the creator. Um, so yeah, they were saying, will he go to the dispersed among the Gentiles and teach the Gentiles? But this is the reason why Paul, um, Christ used Paul to go to the Gentiles. That's among the Gentiles and to teach them, who, they, those who are Jews among the Gentiles, to teach them. You see what I'm saying? Because when, that's why when you go to um, the book of Acts, 
Paul was explaining this to King Agrippa. Um, Acts 26 and verse 12. Whereupon, as I was, as I went to Damascus with authority and commission, and commission from the chief priest, at midday, O king, I saw in the way a light from heaven above the brightness of the sun shining round about me and them which journeyed with me. And when we were all fallen to the earth, I heard a voice speaking unto me and saying in the Hebrew tongue, Saul, Saul, that's Christ talking to him, that's Jesus talking to him. In the Hebrew tongue, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? Because Paul is a Jew and he persecuted his own, his own people persecute thou me it is hard why why persecute thou me it is hard for thee to kick against the pricks and i said and i said who art thou lord and he said i am jesus whom thou persecutest but rise and stand and stand upon thy feet for i have appeared unto thee for this purpose to make thee a minister see that and a witness both of these things which thou hast seen and of those things in the which I will appear unto thee, delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles unto whom thou I send thee. You see that? To open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins. The only ones who receive forgiveness of sins are Israel. And inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. You see that? Whereupon, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision, but showed first unto them of Damascus and at Jerusalem and throughout all the all the coast of Judea, and then to the Gentiles, that they should repent and turn to God and do works meet for repentance. See, for these causes, the Jews caught me in the temple and went about to kill me. Having therefore obtained help of, help of God, I continued unto this day witnessing both too small and great, saying none other things than those which the prophets and Moses did say should come, that Christ should suffer and that he should be the first that should rise from the dead and show light unto the people, unto the people and to the Gentiles. You see that? The Gentiles, the Jews born in other nations, the Gentiles are the saints and the elect also. You see what I'm saying? They are the saints, the elect. That's why when you go to Luke, Simeon, un, Simeon, this is what Simeon, this is why Simeon said this here. Right? So he said, Paul said, and show light unto the people and to the Gentiles. When you go to Luke chapter 2. And uh, when he seen Christ, Luke 2, 25, and behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and the same man was just and devout, waiting for the, what, consolation of Israel, the comfort, you see, and the Holy Ghost was upon him. Simeon is a Jew, and it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not that he should not see death before he has seen the Lord's Christ. And he came, that the Lord's Christ, that Shalah. And he came by the Spirit. And he came by the Spirit into the temple. And when the parents brought in the child, Jesus, to do for him after the custom of the law. See, that's the law of Moses. Then took he him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now let thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For my eyes have seen thy salvation. You see that? Which there's no, there's salvation in any other name but Jesus. Thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, a light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of thy people Israel. You see that? Remember what Paul said in Acts 26 and 23. And show light unto the people and to the Gentiles. All right. And let's read verse 34. 
And Simeon blessed them and said unto Mary his mother, Behold, the child is set for the fall and rising again of many in Israel, of many in, in where? In Israel. And for a sign which shall be spoken against. Yes, yeah, sword shall pierce through thy own soul also, that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. So a light to lighten the Gentiles, right? Now, when you go over to here, to Acts chapter 13, this is why Paul was speaking to the Jews first, because the word had to go to the, to the Jews first. All right? Christ's salvation is of the Jews. So the Jews had to hear it first, the Jews that was born in the land. Because just like as John, he preached, it started from Jerusalem. Okay, so the gospel had to be speak to the Jews first. And then it goes out to Samaria and, you know, to the uttermost parts of the earth, to all nations. But listen what Paul said here. But when the Jews saw the multitudes, they were filled with envy. See that? Because, um, let's read from 42. And when the Jews were going out of the synagogue, the Gentiles besought that they, that these words might be preached to them. You see that? The next Sabbath. So the Gentiles was looking for the word to be preached to them too, right? Now, when the congregation was broken up, many of the Jews and religious proselytes followed Paul and Barnabas, who speaking to them persuaded them to continue in the grace of God. And the next Sabbath day came almost the whole city together to hear the word of God. So this is the next Sabbath. But when the Jews saw the multitudes, they were filled with envy. See that? And spake against those things which were spoken by Paul, contradic contradicting and blaspheming. Listen to what Paul said. Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said it was necessary that the word of God should, should first have been spoken to you. See, to the Jews. Because when you go to the book of Acts chapter Two, we're gonna come right back. No, Acts chapter three. This is what Peter was explaining to the Jews because it was for them to hear it first. Because salvation is of the Jews. See, because he's gonna let you know about as Paul said in um matter of fact, I'll, I'll just keep going. Acts chapter three. And let's start at 20. And he shall send Jesus Christ, which which before was preached unto you, whom the heaven must receive until the times of restitution of all things, which God hath spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. See, it was prophecy about Christ coming to save the people of Israel. The world began. Um, prophet since the world began for Moses truly said unto the fathers a prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren that's why it says in Hebrews it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren Christ like unto me him shall ye hear in all things whatsoever he shall say unto you and it shall come to pass that every soul which will not hear that prophet shall be destroyed from among the people yeah and all the prophets that's uh, Deuteronomy 18. Yea, and all the prophets from Samuel and those that follow after, as many as have spoken, have likewise foretold of these days. See, because that's the Christ is the salvation of Israel. Ye are the children of the prophets and of the covenant which God made with our fathers, saying unto Abraham and in thy seed shall all the kindreds of the earth be blessed. These are Israelites. It's going into the Gentiles who are Jews born in other nations also. The kindreds of all kindreds of the earth be blessed. Those are the Israelites. Unto you first. See, Peter said, unto you first. He's speaking to the Jews here. Unto you first, God, God having raised up his son Jesus, sent him to bless you and turning away every one of you from his iniquities. Because it was the gospel was to go to the Jews first. Christ is the salvation of the Jews. Okay. And then do the rejection of some of the Jews' salvation come on to the Gentiles. Who are Jews born in other nations and to and into the twelve into the ten tribes of Israel. Now let's go back to Acts chapter 13 and let's read from verse 46. 
Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said, it was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken to you. We just read that, that Peter just said the same thing to you. But seeing ye put it from you and judge yourselves up unworthy of everlasting life lo we turn to the gentiles now these are jews born in other nations and the northern in the northern kingdom not all the jews that were born in the land rejected jesus christ some of them believed they did believe that's why when you go to here to john chapter 1 in verse 11 the bible says he came unto his own christ and his own received him not but as many as received him, so some did receive him. Some Jews that were born in the land did receive the Christ. To them gave he power to become the sons of God. Some of the Jews he gave power to become the sons of God. They are part of the elect, the saints also. Even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh. You see that? Because they, the saints and elect are born again nor of the will of man but of god being born again not of corruptible seed but of incorruptible by the word of god which liveth and abideth forever so some of the jews all the jews didn't reject jesus that was born into the land that was born in the land some of them did believe on christ and he gave them power to become the sons of god so the jews now some of but do some of the do the jews some of the jews rejection salvation come on to the to the Gentiles who are called Jews in the, in the northern kingdom. Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said it was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken to you, to the Jews born in the land. But seeing ye put it from you and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life, lo, we turn to the Gentiles. You see that? For so have the Lord commanded us, saying, I have set thee to be a light for the Gentiles. See that? That thou shouldest be for the salvation of unto the ends of the earth now due to some of the rejection of the jews salvation come to the rest of israel that's why paul said in romans 11 blindness is part has happened to israel till the fullness of the gentiles come in and so all israel shall be saved that was the point the gentiles are israelites and so all israel shall be saved because the deliverer, as he said, the deliverer shall come out of Zion. That's in uh, that's in the book of Isaiah. That's Shelah. That's Jesus Christ. He's going to gather the 12 tribes of Israel. So Paul is letting you know, letting us know there in, in, in Romans 11, 25 to 26, that those are all Israelites that's going to be saved. All right. And um, so he said, um. The Lord, I have set thee to be a light of the Gentiles. Remember, in Acts 26, when Paul was explaining to King Agrippa about the light of the Gentiles, and Simeon said, you know, the light of 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 the of the of that people, of that people, the salvation of that people Israel, and light of the Gentiles. A light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of that people Israel. Now, let's keep let's keep, keep reading. For so have the Lord commanded us, saying, "I have set thee to be a light of the Gentiles, that thou should that thou shouldest be for salvation unto the ends of the earth." And when the Gentiles heard this, they were glad. You see that, and glorified the word of the Lord. And as many as were ordained to life, uh, ordained to eternal life, believed. Okay, because where did this come? Where where do this go from? Let's go back to the Old Testament to. Let's go back to the Old Testament to um, Isaiah 42 and verse 6. Isaiah 42 and verse 6. Isaiah 42 and verse 6. I, the Lord, have called thee in righteousness and will hold thine hand and will keep thee and give and give thee for a covenant of the people for a light of the Gentiles. You see that it was all this is all talking about Christ to open the blind eyes to bring out the to bring out the prisoners from the prison and them that sit in darkness out of the prison house. 
You see that? These are all Israelites. Because when you jump over here to verse 18, hear ye deaf and look ye blind that ye may see. Who is blind but my servant? The Lord's servant is Israel. Or deaf as my messenger that I sent. Who is blind as he that is perfect and blind as the Lord's servant, seeing many things but thou observest not. Opening the ears, but he heareth not. That's where the prophecy about Isaiah chapter um six come into. They lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and convert, and I should be and I should heal them. The Lord's people was the ones that was sitting in darkness. That's why the Lord said in Acts twenty six to um to Paul to turn them from darkness and from the power of Satan unto God. That was the point. The Gentiles, God's people, the Jews that were born in other nations. Seeing many things, but thou observest not, opening their ears, but he heareth not. The Lord is well pleased for his righteousness sake. He will magnify the law and make it honorable. But this is a people robbed and spoiled, the nation of Israel. They are all of them snared in holes, and they are hid in prison houses. They are for a, they are for a prey, and none delivereth for a spoil, and none saith restore. Who among you will give ear to this? Who will hearken and hear for the time to come? Who gave Jacob for a spoil, and Israel to the robbers? Did not the Lord, who against whom we have sinned? The Lord is the one that did that. Whom we have sinned, for they would not walk in his ways. Uh, for spoiling Israel to the robbers did not did not the Lord he against whom we have sent, for they would not walk in his ways, neither were they obedient unto his law. That's why he made the new covenant to put the law in the saints and the elect inward parts. His uh his promise seed. Let's head over to Isaiah 49 and verse 1. Listen, O islands, unto me, and hearken, ye people from afar. The Lord hath called me from the womb, from the bowels of my mother have he made mention of my name. And he hath made my mouth like a sharp sword, in the shadow of his hand hath he hid me, and made me a polished uh, a polished shaft in his quiver hath he hid me. And said unto me, Thou art my servant, O Israel, in whom I will be glorified. Then I said, I have labored in vain. I have spent my strength for nothing and in vain. Yet surely my judgment is with the Lord and my rock with my God. And now say of the Lord that formed me from the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob again to him. This is all talking about Christ. See, because when you go to Isaiah 42 and verse 1, Behold my servant, whom I uphold mine elect. Christ have God's elect. That's why Christ is going to gather his elect from the four winds when he return. Whom I uphold mine elect and whom my soul delighteth. I have put my spirit upon him. He shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. It's, this is prophecy. Okay. Um, yeah, I have put my spirit upon him. He shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. Let's go back to Isaiah 49. In verse 5, And now say of the Lord that formed me from the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob again to him, though Israel be not gathered. You see what I'm saying? Because unto Shelah shall the gathering of the people be. Yet shall I be glorious in the eyes of the Lord, and my God shall be my strength. That's why the, the Bible says in Revelations, um, Revelations 1 and 5 to 6. And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the and the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the king, and the prince of the kings of the earth, because God said he's gonna make us um make him his firstborn and higher than the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. And he have made us kings and priests. That's the seed of, of the Lord in Christ, that's the elect. Kings and priests unto God and his father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. You see that? So that's why when you go over here um, to God and his father. To God and his father.
when you go to John 20 and 17, Jesus saith unto her, touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my father, but go to my brethren. You see that? And say unto them, I ascend unto my father and your father, and to my God and your God. Let's go back to Isaiah 49 and let's read verse um, 5. And now say of the Lord that fought me from the womb to be his servant to bring Jacob again to him. Though Israel be not gathered, yet shall I be glorious in the eyes of the Lord, and my God shall be my strength. And he said, It is a light thing that thou shouldest be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob. That's the point. He used his twelve disciples. Christ used his twelve disciples and Paul to raise to 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 get um preach the gospel to his people. And he said, it is a light thing that thou shouldest be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the preserved of Israel. I will also give thee for a light to the Gentiles that thou mayest be my salvation unto the ends of the earth. See, that's why Paul said the same thing. And you go back to the book of Acts chapter 13. And 47. For so have the Lord commanded us, saying, I have set thee to be a light, light of the Gentiles, that thou shouldst be for salvation unto the ends of the earth. It was to raise up who? The tribes of Jacob. It's all written about Christ. Okay, so the Gentiles that's among the Gentiles, they are the saints, the elect of God. They're the saints, the elect of God. They're the promised seed that the Lord said they're going to um, dwell in his mountain. In Isaiah 65 and 8 to 9, the same seed that is in Isaiah 61 and verse 9, the same seed, the same righteous seed in Isaiah 60 and 21, the same righteous seed in Isaiah 61 and verse 3. Those are the saints, the elect. All right. So I'm going to end this here and I'll see you. I'll speak to you on the next lesson, God, Lord's willing, in Jesus Christ of Nazareth, great glory name. I hope this video was very edifying. I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to the God of Israel, God Almighty, the Father Jesus Christ, who sits on his glorious and beautiful and powerful throne in heaven right now and forever. The only God that exists, the one true living God, the great power that created all things through his word, his wisdom, his knowledge, his word, the word of life, the eternal life, Jesus Christ, the word of God, the true living God, the only God, now and forever, which is, which was, and which is to come, the almighty Jesus Christ. And, and, um, and his word, wisdom, and son, and knowledge, and word of life, and eternal life, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the word of God, the wisdom of God, the knowledge of God, the word of life, the eternal life, and the Holy Spirit, who is the spirit of truth. Peace be unto thee all, in the name of Jesus. Bye-bye.